what would a web application be without a database? And nowadays, it's even more fun to have object relational mapping. So let's make use of one of the many object relational mapping uh, frameworks that are there for Node.js. And it is simply called ORM2. So we will do oops, npm install ORM at the version 2.1. Save that in our dependencies. And because this is a prototype and I know all the cool kids are using MongoDB, I'm going to use something simple. I'm going to use SQLite 3 because it is the easiest thing to get up and running right now. We'll install that. We're done compiling. We can go back to our code, which has been done for us already by the magic of cut and paste. I have created a file called db.js that's inside of a newly created source folder. Um, this folder has nothing to do with the basic skeleton that we uh, created earlier. It's a new folder. And inside of here, I put the minimal things that we will need for our application. We are going to manage a table of what we'll call breadcrumbs, which are locations of where the user was at. We are having each breadcrumb be at a particular time, at a particular uh, latitude and longitude, and a particular address. We are going to create the table, and we are going to make sure that everything works. Also, we have plugged this in. Now, this also starts to show uh, the complexity of our application. As in, at the top, this is not complex. We added our, we required our new database module. But at the bottom, this is where you start to see both the beauty and the potential maintenance concerns of working with Node.js. We have callbacks within callbacks within callbacks. So the chunk of code that we have at the bottom here simply initializes our database, create the, the tables if they don't exist, and then starts our server. And the managing of this code sort of goes outside of the scope of this particular discussion. So I hope you'll forgive the callbacks and callbacks. Now let's go try it out. Voila, it works. Refresh with a get. We can check in. 